if there's anyone watching me today or watching Chelsea's interview today, trust me, it's not a coincidence that you're watching this. It's really, really, really timely that you're seeing this video. My advice is that you should dream big. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chelsea Ohenewa. And today I have a master's student. I would go in because she graduated today. But she'll do her graduation next in year, November. right? In November. In November. Yeah. Nice. So I'm going to ask her a question. It's been a while I did a one-to-one -one interview with someone. I've been chasing her for three good months. <laughs> she never comes for me to interview her. So today <laughs> I caught her. So introduce yourself. She's Abigail, by the way, but she's going to introduce herself. Right. Well, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be here on Chelsea's channel. Indeed, she has chased me and she has caught me finally. <laughs> My name is Abigail and I am currently on the path to graduate from the Master of Regenerative Sustainability. I have been a student here in SENS at the University of Saskatchewan for the past two years. And trust me, today is kind of a full circle experience for me right now. I'm originally from Ghana and I studied chemistry back in the University of Ghana. I also have a bit of professional experience in sustainability, working with different social enterprises at some point post COVID. So this is like one major step for me doing my master's and then being shot out into the professional world. So I look forward to what the future brings. Thank you. Thank you. You see the English? Okay, I'm just gonna be behind the camera and then I'll be asking their questions that she's gonna answer. So why did you choose to be here? Okay, thank you very much for the question, Chelsea. So first of all, before coming to do my postgraduate studies, I had thought about where I wanted to do a master's degree. I was quite interested in sustainability because as I mentioned earlier, I did work with a social enterprise called Challenges Ghana back in Accra, where we actually helped small scale businesses to develop. And at the same time, we help young people gain the skills necessary to be put out in the professional world. So we did these in line with the sustainability development goals, most importantly, focusing on economic growth and then also, you know, young people getting jobs like in the economy. So I already knew I was going to study sustainability or something related to that. As a result, I started looking for schools around the world where I could go. But honestly, my first choice was Canada because I just thought they had like an excellent educational system and then they were also quite adept in sustainability courses because a number of universities I looked up already offered courses in the field I wanted to do. So yeah, it was a long haul, started way back from just before COVID, paused for a little bit and then started after 2021. And I started looking for the schools and then lo and behold, by God's grace, I ended up here in the University of Saskatchewan doing the program I opted to do. So it's been an amazing experience. So was this the only school you applied to in mm, Canada? No. No, this was not the only school I applied to in Canada. I'd applied to quite a number. If I remember about six schools, I remember that I actually got admission to one of the schools or almost got admission to one of the schools, Ryerson University, got a supervisor and everything. But you know, she had mentioned that the program was full at the time and I could try again the following year and all that. So yeah, there were some repeat applications to same schools, but no, roughly about five or six applications. And this was the last one that I did, which surprisingly fell through. And again, give thanks to God. This program is self-funded and you've done it for two years. You are done. I know you were a TA. I don't know how much the TA pays, but I know it's not much to cover for a whole term situation. Right. So how did you survive? Right. So thank you again for the question about funding. So for a professional master's, most of the times it is a self-funded program. So it is very important for you as an international student, most especially to look for funding opportunities that are out there. They could be in the form of bursary, scholarships, and what have you. So fortunately, I could fund some of the the program, like at least for the first year, I had a lot of support. I also got bursaries that were put out there in the universities, especially like the Graduate Students Association's bursary that was given out every year. So that meant I had to apply for them, look for them, apply for them, make sure I put in my best application. And I won a couple of times to support with the funding. Now, for the two years as well, it wasn't like every term that I did get funding. 
so i have to juggle like doing extra work alongside school to be able to earn enough money to pay some of my tuition by myself i got the opportunity to also be a ta in cents which again helps with the financial burden but you are also required as a student to put in as much time in your academic affairs as you would in the work world so yes it's been a long shot but it's also been about finding opportunities finding work to do budgeting and then knowing how to spread your finances so that you'll be able to cater for the expenses that comes with the course my next question will be how has it been settling on campus like being in saskatoon being new to canada and then being new to sense so if anybody does not know what sense means sense is like the school of environment and sustainability mm -hmm. so how has it been settling here right so yes it was my first time coming to canada because of this program and as an international student i'll say that like it is challenging i'm sure a lot of international students are familiar with the situation of you know the huge cultural difference moving from back home to a new environment altogether sometimes having to do like you know jobs that you're probably overqualified for or maybe not having enough competencies to fit in certain job spaces because it's something that's important to us to work to gain like canadian experience for future purposes also when i came to sense i remember quite clearly that in my year cohort i happened to be the only african in the class and i thought it was going to be awkward because when i got admission into the program i didn't come to canada till about two months later so I started my program online back home in Ghana. So like being back there behind the computer and then like nobody really sees you, you know, interacts physically with you. It was, it was comforting and confusing at the same time because sometimes you feel like, oh, I am part of this class. But then sometimes you feel like, well, I could be there in person, right? So when I finally got the opportunity to come, I remember I came here in November and it was like right in the middle of winter in Saskatoon so it wasn't the best experience like coming from a really warm climate straight into freezing cold like i stayed like two months indoors i didn't step out i didn't work i didn't do anything but study so yeah that time offered me the opportunity to settle down and settle in classes get in a good routine that also meant me managing my time and putting in my best effort in my academic work subsequently i had to look for a job somewhere in january and it was still in the middle of winter but you have to have the mental fortitude to know that whatever situation that is going to come your way that is in my case my first time embracing winter i was going to get through it people had survived so i had to do it so in order for me to go through it, i had to get you know the stuff that i needed clothes shoes call the right people if i was stuck somewhere so i get picked up making sure I was well-fed, nourished, and then, you know, keeping warm so that I'll be able to survive the challenges of each day. When it was spring into summer, I started coming on campus a few times because I live off campus. I didn't stay on campus residence. So I had to start coming to campus to get familiar with the SENS faculty and SENS students as well. But I, to my surprise, found that because of the nature of my program, most of my classmates did their courses online as well so i didn't get to meet some of them so it was not until the second year when i became a ta that i fully immersed myself in the faculty and stuff and it has been amazing because i have met people from all walks of life and it has been a very thrilling experience so much to learn so many perspectives to glean from so that is how i have settled so far and i'm proud to say that i am able to now offer help to like newcomers as well to help their settling into the space whether in my program or other programs very comfortably okay so before you came here did you know anyone here like any Ghanaian, or did you follow any Ghanaian community or just came into the unknown right so personally one of the things i wanted to do in my life was to go somewhere i didn't have family members or go somewhere that i didn't know anybody just to test myself to see how much i was going to survive so frankly speaking before moving to saskatoon i didn't know anybody here i had no family members here i had no friends here i didn't know of any Ghanaian community however i was proactive because during the orientation sessions by the university it is also offered online for everybody so you can join from anywhere in the world 
I connected to some Ghanaians that I found present online so that I could find out a little bit about them when they were going to move to Canada and then what courses they were also doing. So with those first few steps, when I moved to Canada, fortunately, they moved here before I did. So they had like a few weeks of experience that I didn't have, which was still relevant to me anyway, because like I remember when I moved in finally, one of the guys that I connected with, he's called Silas, he helped me go around the community here. Like he took me on a campus tour, which I missed because I was still back home in Ghana and, you know, familiarize myself with different places. Fortunately, the resident that I got before I moved here also had a Ghanaian living there. So I was able to connect quickly and she also connected me to church where I met other Ghanaian community members. So currently I attend the Church of Pentecost in Saskatoon and it has been an amazing experience so far. Okay, so now you're done with school, right? Mm -hmm. So what's next for you? What are your plans? So as we had mentioned earlier, I fortunately and by God's grace finished my final year symposium today i had i got the opportunity to present what i've been working on over the summer as a master's project student and what's next that's really that's a really big question but for me what's next is like i jokingly say take like 48 hours of sleep and not you know shut every device not read anything turn off my phone no calls and rest because it is important to do so and as i rest i'm reflecting on the next steps I know immediately that there are a few things that I want to do. So after gaining all this academic competence, I am left to how to translate it into the professional space here in Canada. So some of the few things I want to do right after now is to take a few online certificate programs so I could update my professional portfolio before I start the job search in my professional field. So I know it's going to take a bit of time, but I am prepared for the wait. And while doing that, I hope to acquire skills and more people experiences so that when I get a job, it is the best fit for me. So for the meantime, I'm going to rest and I'm going to plan because there is a sure and a steady way moving forward, especially for students who are here in Canada there's lots of opportunities for us out there and we have to be prepared for them. Okay, so do you have any advice for someone in Ghana that has that's probably chanced on this video and is watching you and then has hopes of coming here too? Do you have any advice for someone like that? Yes. So if there's anyone watching me today or watching Chelsea's interview today, trust me, it's not a coincidence that you're watching this. It's really, really, really timely that you're seeing this video. My advice is that you should dream big, no matter what it is that you want to achieve in life. Do not be limited by the space that you find yourself in. Do not be limited by the mindsets that you have. You should open up your mind to the other perspectives that surround you. If it's Canada you want to come to, find the appropriate means to come here and use the available resources to work everything in your favor. If you want to continue in your life as a student, trust me, life is a never-ending school. You're going to keep learning. So right from home, start looking for resources. Right now in the tech age, there's lots of things you can learn online. There's lots of competencies you can build before you move out of the country. And even if you want to stay in the country, there's always a way to make yourself more marketable and more excellent in whatever field you find yourself in. So my advice is always look for a way to improve yourself so that when opportunities come, you will be the best fit and the only choice that there is for whatever it is that you're supposed to do. Any last words? Well, I personally want to thank Chelsea you know, before she came here, like she reached out to me through LinkedIn and I wasn't sure anybody could do that. But yeah, I will leave my social media details with her so you could just connect whenever. But yes, she did reach out to me and it's been amazing working with her. Trust me, she's had lots of opportunities. She's had lots of things to share about her life as a student here in Canada. And I'm pretty sure you're following her. You have subscribed and you have liked all of her videos and you are still going to from time to time hear from people like myself and others who will be sharing their experiences here. And we hope that they'll be valuable to you. So stay connected and I hope to see you sometime. <laughs> this interview has been the best. Hi, yeah. Nico. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I'll come your way same time next week with another video. Bye. Bye.